Drew, how are we feeling about the 2022 ALDS Game 5 Yankees Guardians? Dude, I'm just... What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Dugout Episode 4. As always, so much to get to, and we will bring it to you in an hour or less. I am Cardinal Sonata, AJ Caldwell, and that is the Yankees Rider Die Guy, Drew Zagrosi. Drew, how are we feeling about the 2022 ALDS Game 5 Yankees Guardians? Dude, I'm just... I have some ups and downs. We're going to be getting into that later. We're going to get into it. Yeah. We're going to get into it. I was going to cut you off. I was going to let you talk. I, I wasn't sure what to do right there, but yeah, yeah. we're going to get into Drew's feelings a little bit. As you guys always know, in this episode, either one or both of us is always getting into our feelings. You heard me just pop off about the Cardinals last week, and today... We will get into some more collapses, some more top fives, some more baseball dates in history. And then, of course, you're going to hear from Drew himself about how he's feeling about his New York Yankees with the culmination of the 2022 Division Series. The Yankees and Guardians are the only ones left to play to finish off the Division Series. So we're going to get right into it. We are the team, Drew. We are the ride. The 2011 World Series is about the only thing I have left to hold on to as a Cardinals fan but I will hold on to it for as long as I can. Let's lead it off, and let's do another top five. We've already done the Dodgers. We've already done the Astros. People, I got so much off my chest with that. I'm so thankful we got those teams out of the way because today we are doing a top five of the St. Louis Cardinals all time. Drew and I talked off camera. We both only have five names on our list. (laughs) Keep in mind, the previous two weeks when we've done this, we've had multiple names on our list. To be able to kind of, you know, fluctuate, this is going to go one of two ways, Drew. Yes. I'm the Cardinals fan, so you, you already told me you, don't, you want to make me proud. You want, to, mm-hmm. you want to be able to give me some great names here. Drew, I'm here to tell you, bro. <laughs> don't, don't, don't mess this up, man. Don't mess this up. Down. I'm going to start with number five so that I can also do number one. And as always, we go back and forth leading up to the number one St. Louis Cardinal in baseball history, in the franchise's history. Let's get right into it, Drew. Yes, sir. I only got five names. Me as well. And number five. This is so difficult because there's so many legendary Cardinals, right? There's so many. You talk about the history of the St. Louis Cardinals franchise, 11 world championships. 2006 and 2011 are the most recent ones for my St. Louis Cardinals. I remember the 2011 one when I was a young child. But where do I go? I go to, for number five on my list. I go to Ozzie Smith. Ozzie Smith, the best shortstop in St. Louis Cardinals history, and I would argue one of the best shortstops in baseball history. Ozzie Smith perfected, Drew, the backflip in baseball. No one else was doing it. No one else has done it since. Uh, Ozzie Smith perfected the backflip in his career. He played a long time. He actually spent his first four years as a Padre, which I don't don't think anybody realized, including myself. Spent the rest of his career in St. Louis. He was a great hitter for the Cardinals. Batted 262 overall, so he wasn't a great hitter. But from a defensive standpoint, Drew, you are not going to find a better shortstop for the Cardinals, obviously. I mean, we haven't had very many great shortstops since then. But in the Cardinals history and also in baseball history, give me Ozzie Smith, the magician Ozzie Smith, with the greatest call, one of the greatest calls in Cardinals history of going of go crazy, folks, go crazy when he hit the home run to send the Cardinals to the World Series. Uh, Very much looking forward to seeing where you're going with this, but I start with Ozzie Smith at number five. Yeah, so, uh, yep, I would put him there. Um, Like you said, he came from the Padres. I think he was a big help of that 1982 World Series win for sure. Um, Yeah, just some really smooth defense. So, yeah, I like that pick. All right, number four. We did talk about a little who we kind of had on the list, not really, just one person. And just because you had this person on your list, I feel like I have to put him at number four, Yadier Molina. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So I actually didn't even have him on my list. Like we said, we had had five five players each on this list. I did not have him, but I feel like he he does deserve a spot, so... One of the best defensive catchers all time, my opinion. I think you can agree with that. Yep. I think he is the 
most defensive best yes, defensive you, you've said it before but, but um yep. yeah just uh really special to the cardinals franchise i think uh he definitely deserves a spot here and we can't i feel like we can't put him any higher than that i really i really don't i would agree i would agree with the names i have on my list if it's not <laughs> we, we, we're about to go in the top three drew if if you do not have and i might even ask you this at the end of the top five if you do not have any of these three gentlemen in, in the top three on your list right now, we might as well just move on to the next segment. Cause no, I'm going to be I, honest. I'm, I'm more comfortable with the top three than like the first two picks. I'm not going to lie. I think, I think you'll be proud. I really do. Okay. Well, without further ado, let me go to number three. This is so tough because these three yeah. guys, they are almost interchangeable for mm-hmm. me. Uh, all also as a St. Louis Cardinals fan, they're very interchangeable. They're legendary talents. They're all-time baseball talents. I mean, you think about Stan Mu- or you think about I almost said one of them. You think about <laughs> Ozzie Smith and uh, Yadier Molina. They're great talents, but when you talk about baseball history, it's harder to make a case for them, even though I think you can. These three guys, it's a no-brainer. At number three, I got Bob Gibson. Okay. I'm not going to put Bob Gibson higher than three because of me almost showing my cards with one of the top two. Mm-hmm. Bob Gibson, in my opinion, Drew, from a starting pitcher standpoint, he's top five all time. Yep. He's one of the only pitchers in MLB history to throw a no-hitter in a World Series game. Uh, he would strike out 15 to 18 hitters per start. I mean, this is back in the day when guys were throwing 150 to 200 pitches per start. So it was a different era, but Bob Gibson still brought it. I mean, the the his even pitching motion, they've shown parallels between guys that are pitching in the majors now. And the way that Bob Gibson would almost lean back and pitch, it was otherworldly. It was something you had never seen before. Uh, and it was around that same time that the color barrier was being broken as well. So Jackie Robinson, Bob Gibson, like these guys were like talking heads for baseball as we were getting more diverse. And now, of course, you have Dominican Republic and all these great talents coming from other countries. Bob Gibson was one of the catalysts for that, of course. Um, one of the greatest pitchers of all time, in my opinion. And as a St. Louis Cardinal as well. I mean, best pitcher of all time. Not even close. Yeah. Uh, we think about Adam Wainwright and his great career. He He's a great pitcher. He doesn't hold a candle to Bob Gibson. Bob Gibson is at the top of that list. Uh, so I got him at number three. Yeah. Drew? Yeah, uh, I mean, you won two Cy Youngs with the team. 251 games won as a Cardinal. That's just crazy. Yep. Um, yep. Like you said, just the best, best pitcher for the, for the Cardinals ever. So Best pitcher of all time. Pick. I'm glad you put him at a three. Yeah. (laughs) So number two, I'm going to put this player in number two, because I personally feel like he can't, the other guy that I'm thinking in my head has to be number one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, I'm going to put Albert Pulhos at number two. Yep. I agree. Okay. I agree. Yep. So Albert Pulhos, um, only Cardinal with 700 home runs. I mean, Yep. Just crazy. Uh, won three MVPs with the Cardinals. Will obviously be rem- remembered as one of the greatest Cardinals ever, just like everyone on this list, most likely. But, um, yeah, and he was the leader of that 2006 and 2022 – or, uh, yeah, 2006 World Series team. So. Yep, 2006, 2011. 2011 uh, one of yeah. the biggest what-ifs, I think, in sports history is what if our Pujols never got traded. Uh, I think that will go down in the – history of humanity and the history of sports of what happens if our pools is a Cardinals entire career. Uh, I'd rather not talk about that personally, because I think we would be a dynasty uh, rather than all the postseason lack of postseason success that we've had. I will stop there because if I get in <laughs> too much more into it, Drew, you're going to see the Twitch come back to my eye. Um, yep. So our pools, obviously you, you already mentioned it, but what else can be said about this guy? Legendary career, uh, finishing his career in St. Louis, which is such a cool thing. Um, for everybody in St. Louis, for everyone as a baseball fan, um, very thankful he finished where he started. And, yeah, only Cardinal to hit 700 home runs and one of only four players in MLB history to hit 700 home runs. But he is not one of the main – this is how I would describe this next individual, Drew. Mm-hmm. He made baseball. right? You think about guys that, going back to the – 1890s when baseball started, right? We think about James Naismith and when he invented basketball. You think about, you know, how all these other sports were invented. Stan Musial basically invented baseball. 
you think about him and Cy Young and Babe Ruth and those guys in that era. And everyone makes all these jokes. Oh, they were playing plumbers. They were playing painters. They weren't playing guys that were actual baseball players. They were still playing a game that, as it was developing, was developing because of them. Right? The game of baseball would not have developed in the way that it did if it was not for Stan Musial. As one of the best hitters of all time. I mean, forget just about the franchise of the St. Louis Cardinals for a second. Stan Musial is one of the best hitters of all time. Drew, he hit 331 for his career. Mm -hmm. For his career. If guys hit 331 in one season, that's great. Drew, he hit 351 in one season. He hit 346 in another season. He hit 376 in one season. This guy was unbelievable. And by the way, he played in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So when I mentioned Cy Young and Babe Ruth, those were eras that were being passed. Stan Musial carried that era. He carried that era with you know the Brooklyn Dodgers guys, of course, Jackie Robinson, we already brought up. You think about Stan Musial, you think about baseball. And when you think about baseball, you think about Stan Musial. There's a reason that his name is Stan the Man and not yep. Stan Musial. Because he was the man uh, year in and year out. Played in the majors for 22 years, Drew, every single one of them with the St. Louis Cardinals. Stan yep. Musial is the best St. Louis Cardinal of all time. Followed closely, of course, by Albert Pujols. Bob Gibson, Yadier Molina, and Ozzy Smith. Yes, sir. Um, just you brought up he's like one of the greatest hitters ever. Um, as a Cardinal, he's first in hits, first yep. in runs scored, first in doubles, triples, home runs, RBIs, and walks. I mean, how else can you put it? Well, he's not first in home runs anymore because of Oh, football. obviously, yeah, yeah. Obviously yeah. not home runs. But, uh, yeah, just still unbelievable. Yes. He, he made the game of baseball what it is today. And we are forever thankful for guys like Stan Musial for ba as baseball fans. Like, you can't just be a Cardinals fan. We talk about Stan Musial. You have to be a baseball fan that understands where baseball is today because of him. So, there you go. Top five St. Louis Cardinals. Next week, we'll be getting into Drew's bag with the top five Yankees of all time. Looking forward to greatly disappointing Drew uh, by not having Derek Jeter in the top five. But we'll get to that next week. Um, yes, just sir. kidding. Um, let's move on. We have... Uh, on this date again, Drew, to get to this is our new new segment that we're that we're starting, where we basically give you guys a date in baseball history that happened uh, around this time or around even this particular day in MLB history, and it goes hand in hand, Drew. It goes hand in hand with what we just talked about because 17 years ago today, as we sit here, October 17, 2022, on October 17, 2005, Drew the longest home run in MLB history happened. Yes, sir. A ball that was hit to outer space happened. And, Bra and a man's baseball career ended. Mm -hmm. Because Brad Lidge of the Houston Astros, when the Houston Astros were still in the National League, was pitching against Albert Pujols in the playoffs. Astros versus Cardinals, when it was a huge rivalry. And he hung a slider, and Albert Pujols hit it, not just over the train tracks, not just out of the stadium. This man hit it into space. And if you think I'm being hyperbolic, if you think I'm being crazy, just go on to Twitter and type in Albert Pujols Brad Lidge, and you will see people with photographic I'm just kidding. Um, but you will see people talk about how far this man hit the ball. Albert Pujols was different in the playoffs, brother. I mean, he was just a different animal. You think about Reggie Jackson, you think about Derek Jeter, you think about Ted Williams, you think about even recently uh, the Buster Poseys, and guys that are clutch postseason hitters, none of them compare to Albert Poole's home runs in the playoffs. When he would hit a ball, when he would hit a home run, it wouldn't just inch over the wall. He would hit it out of the stadium, and there's rumors. There is a picture of a baseball in space that someone <laughs> captioned was saying this is the 2005 home run of Albert Poole's hitting a home run off Brad Lidge, and this is where it landed. That is the joke that Brad Lidge has to live with the rest of his life, and I love it. I love every single second of it on this day 17 years ago, Albert Pujols. We didn't win the series, but I will forever cherish that moment. I was only seven, but watching that highlight was one of the greatest moments, I think, in baseball history. Yeah, 
Uh, what I love even more almost is because last week we had to rank the top five Astros of all time, and then we get to talk about this. It's just, it's great. I it's a it. perfect sequel. It's a perfect sequel to talking about the Cardinals right on the heels of the Astros because the Cardinals haven't cheated either. There we go. There's there's there our little uh, slide there it is. as well. So, yes, sir. Drew, what we got next? All right, next we are going to be getting into our next collapse segment. We've been doing this the past few weeks. And this week, I'm sorry, but Cubs fans, Don't we're coming after you. We're coming Don't after you. Don't apologize, Drew. Don't apologize. I've been waiting for this since the moment we knew we were going to start this podcast. This is the day that we have been waiting for. I told y'all to look out. I told y'all to duck for cover. Now, <laughs> Cubs fans, pull up a chair. Sit down. Relax. It's okay. You don't got to worry about the playoffs for the next 10 years. It's all right. You guys are good. Just kick back, relax. Let's talk about 2016. And then let's move on and talk about how bad you guys have been. <laughs> Chicago Cubs. Drew in 2015. I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll wear my own hurt right now. 2015, St. Louis Cardinals won 100 games. I hate that I have to even bring this up. We won 100 games. Going into the National League Division Series against Chicago Cubs. We lose to the Cubs in the playoffs. One of the weirdest, most gut-punching moments that I've witnessed up until 2022 wild card against the Phillies. The Cubs outs us, move on to the NLCS where they get swept <laughs> by the New York Mets. One of the weirdest baseball years. I think we just needed to do a, a deep dive at some point, Drew, into the 2015 playoffs. One of the weirdest years we've seen. The Royals were in the World Series. The Royals won that World Series. I mean, just... Tons of fluke things going on. So the Cubs get swept in the National League Championship Series. And all these Cubs fans are crying. They're sad. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Steve Bartman all over again. 2016 comes. And the Cubs are back in the National League Championship Series. And they win. And they're going to the World Series for the first time in over a century, Drew. <laughs> Think about that. First time in over a century that they're going to the World Series. And they beat the Cleveland Indians, now Guardians, in seven games. And what I believe is one of the greatest World Series we've seen in recent memory. There's been a lot of great ones. Uh, I won't bring up 2001, uh, Yankees, Diamondbacks, but that was also a great World Series. Luis Gonzalez, floater into center field. But Rajay Davis seen a two-run home run off, to, off a roll to Chapman uh, to tie the game at six, going to the top of the ninth. Ben Zobrist then hitting a two-run double down the left field line. The Cubs win the World Series. Right? You remember the call. Joe Buck, the Cubs have won the World Series. Mm -hmm. Finally, they finally won it all. True. That is the last time <laughs> we have seen the Chicago Cubs play a Major League Baseball game. I'm convinced. Okay, let, 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 me, let me tell you something, people. Since 2016, Game 7, Chicago Cubs. I don't even need to go into the details of this because it's been that bad. You know, a couple weeks ago I went to, oh, here's the actual record of the Kansas City Royals or whatever. I don't even need to get into that. You guys don't deserve to know how bad it's been because that would make this not a family-friendly show. It's been that bad to the Chicago Cubs. Since the 2016 Game 7 World Series, the Cubs have made the playoffs once. And it was in a 60-game season. Since the 2016 World Series, the Cubs have been back to the playoffs a couple times. They went to the National League Championship Series. They, were the, they did all these great things. Drew, I'm about to make a case. At the 2016 World Series was the biggest fluke job in the history of sports. Wow. The Cubs winning the World Series, right? They had this great talent. They have all this great stuff going on. They have all these great players and Joe Madden and Chicago Cubs baseball. And you have uh, actors and celebrities going to the Cubs games and they're just like fawning over the Cubs. They've gotten rid of all their superstars. Their rebuild was worse than their first rebuild after the 2003 Steve Bartman thing when they were trying to figure out their, their team and trying to figure out where they were going to go from here. Their biggest storyline before 2016 was a guy who used steroids <laughs> or that their, um, that their manager would get ejected for kicking dirt into an umpire's shoes. Those were the biggest storylines for Chicago Cubs. had nothing to do with baseball. <laughs> and now, guess what the Cubs' biggest storyline is? There isn't one. The Cubs suck. And I love it. I love every minute of talking about this. 
because they're not a contender. They're not even, they're barely even a Major League Baseball team. If it ever, if ever they're good again, it's going to be when Drew and I are in nursing homes. <laughs> That's how bad the Cubs have been at handling their roster, at handling success, and at handling a World Series championship. And you say, AJ, they went to the National League Championship Series the year after they won the World Series. What happened? They lost. Oh, well, AJ, teams lose. They, they have, you know, World Series collapses. They don't... Since that 2017 year, the Cubs made the playoffs once before 2020. They made the playoffs in 2020 and lost and have been rebuilding ever since. Here's the worst part. Right, I grew up in the Midwest. You turn on your local television and the Cubs are playing a baseball game. <laughs> Drew, every time I turned on the television when I was a kid, every time I turned on the game, the Cubs were never winning. The Cubs were never leading. The Cubs were never in a close game. It was always a home game at Wrigley Field. The stadiums were always half empty. And they were always playing, go Cubs, go. You lost. You're playing your victory song when you lost. Dude, the Chicago Cubs have let go of Javier Baez. Who, by the way, I won't even get into this. Javier Baez might be one of the most overrated superstars in baseball. Yep. Not a good shortstop. Not a good hitting shortstop. We talked about the Tigers and what has happened to Javier Baez. He's hit under 250. Chris Bryant, also overrated. Anthony Rizzo, gone. On your Yankees now, Drew. Mm -hmm. Jake Arrieta, you Darvish. I mean, great names. You remember Jake Arrieta in the 2016-2015 playoffs? I mean, this guy was Madison Bumgarner, right? He was just taking on the world. Drew, you and I were talking about this as well. Where the heck is Addison Russell? <laughs> I mean, does anyone remember who this guy is? He was the shortstop for Chicago Cubs and was wrecking worlds. He was taking on the Giants and the Dodgers and the Mets and just saying, take all of it. We're going to the World Series. Where is he? He's disappeared. Where'd he go? Drew, he's playing the Mexican Baseball League. The Mexican <laughs> Baseball League. Not even the minors. Not low way ball. He's playing in a different country. I don't know why. I don't know why all of a sudden he's just falling off the map. But he was part of the 2016 World Series Championship. Cup. If that doesn't tell you, if we just brought that up, that would tell you all there is to know about the Chicago Cubs since winning in 2016. And that, Drew, is why the 2016 World Champion Chicago Cubs might be the biggest fluke job in sports history. Yeah. I mean, this might be a hot take. And I have no hatred towards Cubs fans like AJ here, of course. But um, Wrigley oh, I love Field. Cubs fans. I love you Cubs fans. Okay, they're well, so, they're so much fun because they have nothing to talk about. <laughs> but um, Wrigley Field is probably like my most least like uh, stadium. Like, I mean, I get the history behind it, I really do. But it's just, I don't know, man. I really just something needs. To, I feel like they just got to build a new stadium, but. <laughs> Um, Drew, Drew said demolish it yeah, Demolish it. Wrigley But um, this, this goes way back With Cardinals and uh, Cubs fans I mean the Lou Brock trade You remember that of course Yep, Just I one do. of the most lopsided trades I mean it just we can go on and on but, um, Lou Brock bring... also honorable mention Top 5 yeah, Cardinals he was, actually... he was very close Yep very close yep, there he was, he was on my O list But um, anyways uh, Talking about Javier Baez 555 at bats batting 238 what did he get? We talked about, we brought up his contract last uh, episode, but Chris Bryant, I mean, played, so he had 160 at bats this season because of that foot injury or whatever. And he had five home runs playing at Coors Field. That blows my mind. Even with no Drew, it's worse. Bats. It's worse. He had five home runs during the season with the Rockies. He hit zero at Coors Field. Oh, I didn't even know that. Zero. Yeah, that makes, <laughs> that makes it even in better, the yeah. smallest ballpark in major league baseball. A Little League World Series type field. Chris Bryant couldn't hit one home run. Yep. And then... Uh, but Drew, he's one of the best third basemen of all time. I mean, he's one of the best... What are we talking about? What are we doing? Oh, it's great. It's great. And then, of course, we have Anthony Rizzo. I'm not going to bash him. He's uh, he's on my team. So uh, Anthony Rizzo actually turned out fine. Yeah. You Darvish uh, has turned out fine. J.K. Arrieta hosts a podcast now. I mean, like, these guys have... Javier Baez and Chris Bryant were like, oh, yes. look at these guys. They're yeah. so great. No. Fluke job. Very, Fluke job. Yeah, Fluke very job. bad. 
And uh, Anthony Rizzo currently has 32 home runs. And I'm going to say that's mostly because of the short porch at Yankee Stadium. I can't tell you yeah. how many games I've watched because I watch pretty much almost every Yankee game that I can. And every home run just gets over that uh, fence there. So, mm -hmm. um, But still, I mean, he's having a great season. He had those back issues, though. So, But that's really it. I mean, they got a bunch of prospects back, but I don't – you can't really Here you say go too much. again with the prospect. <laughs> you can't. You can't say too much about him. And People, gonna... I, th this is why this is why Drew is a great mediator for me because he always tries to bring in the bright side. We talk about the Royals. Oh, Bobby Witt Jr. We talk about the Tigers. Oh, you have something. Oh, the Cubs. You have all these prospects. Screw your prospects. I don't care who the Cubs have. They could have the next Sammy Sosa. Oh wait, that would mean he used steroids, so it wouldn't work anyways. The no, Cubs, but really, but really. But really. This, the Cubs uh, are not going to be good, bro. I don't. I don't care what prospects they have. They don't. They don't have a shot in the next decade. I will go as far to say, not. yeah, probably I will not. go as far to say that the Cubs will not make the playoffs in the next five years, and they will not reach the division series in the next ten years. I do just want to say though, the Mets, the Mets trade with the Javier Baez when he went to the Mets, that they really did fleece the Mets because Pete Crow Armstrong is a, uh, he's uh, having a year down there in the minors and. He's going to be very good. And also, the Rizzo trade kind of upset me. I loved Anthony Rizzo on the Cubs, and I'm loving him now on the Yankees. But Kevin Alcantara, I'm going to show you guys real quick. I was very high on him. We got the baseball card right here. Oh, the club cards. Very high on him. That kind of sucks. But, um, yeah, the Cubs probably aren't going to be good, so we'll just move on. He's, pull he's pulling out platinum baseball cards <laughs> to try to make up for how bad the Cubs are. That's how bad this has gotten, ladies and gentlemen. If you wonder why we love this collapse segments for things like that, where we have to resort to baseball cards to talk about how good a franchise is. Yep. Give me a break. All right, Drew. Let's move on. I'm ready for this. And I want to hear your takes first because I need some time to, to kind of cool down before I get amped up again about something that I'm actually so excited to talk about. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. But okay. first, give me your take. On the 2022 NLDS and ALDS, which of course still needs to come to a conclusion. As we're recording, we still have one more 2022 Division Series game between your Yankees and the Guardians. Outside of that, give me your takes and your takeaways, your biggest storylines, your wow moments from what has been one of the best postseasons we've seen. For sure. So I think I'm going to leave the Yankees Guardian Series for last. I'll end yep. off on that. But, um, yep. We got to start with the Astro Mariners series. The big 16 inning scoreless, just ridiculous, boring. 18 innings. Was it 18? In well, it was it went into 16 scoreless. 16 scoreless. That's the first time ever in postseason history, which is ridiculous. The longest in postseason history, I should say. But um I think I think we all knew that the Astros were going to come out with that. I mean, really. Just <laughs> Jeremy Pena, did he hit the go at home run? Was that he did. was that it? Yeah. So he's again. We've said in previous podcasts too. Um, Carlos Correa, they have Jeremy Pena now. I mean, it's really the Astros are just they always seem to find a way. And if the Yankees do make it there, I'm just I'm going to be terrified like every year. <laughs> but our, our oldest Chapman will not be there, so I'm very happy for that. No no uh, walk offs against him. <laughs> but um, yeah. How did you feel about that? Uh, the uh, the whole Astros Mariners series. <sighs> was disappointed. They obviously got swept, and I was yep. really pulling for the Mariners there. Yep, I was disappointed. Um, I wanted the Mariners to to create some magic. I really, I really did, bro. I really wanted to see them come back to Seattle and Felix Hernandez throughout the first pitch. I'm just like, yep. this is gonna be great, bro. It went like you said, 16, 17 innings scoreless. I was getting ready to watch like one of the next one of the next games on the slate and for the day. And I was like, the Astros Mariners game is still going. Like it was that bad. Like it was like, this game was going on for days. Mm -hmm. um, Astros obviously come out on top, which I had predicted, but I predicted it in five. The Mariners couldn't even get out of Seattle. It's kind of disappointing, but they have a bright future. And I saw a really sure. cool thing. A Mariners fan posted, Hey, regardless of what happens, the Mariners need to host a parade, just a thank you parade to the Mariners, the 2022 Mariners. Uh, because they did do a great thing. They sent the Mariners back to the playoffs for the first time in 21 years. 
Uh, they have a bright future. I mean, huge, huge bright future. You're not going to see any collapse stories from the Mariners moving forward. I mean, you're not going to see another 10 years where they don't make the playoffs. They're going to be in the contention, I would argue, even for AL West titles moving forward with Julio Rodriguez, with Robbie Ray, with Luis Castillo. I mean, with J.P. Crawford. They have the pieces to do this. Eugenio Suarez. Um, but the Astros are the Astros. And they're not cheaters anymore. I know we'd love to bring it up. But they're just a really good baseball team now. Uh, they hit the ball really well. And they came out on top of one of the longest slugfests um, in MLB postseason history. So 2022 Astros moving on to the ALCS. Uh, but in my opinion, Drew, they weren't even the biggest storyline of the division series. Give me your no. take on the Braves and the Phillies and what in the world happened to the city of Philadelphia over the past couple days. So we got we to gotta scroll back a little bit. To where you said the Braves or the Phillies can have fun being swept by the Braves. I think you're just cursing all these teams, man. So I'm scared that you said that the Yankees were going to sweep the Guardians now. I'm, I'm getting nervous. Not going to lie. But, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, not a great track record right now. Yeah, I just, Philadelphia, I mean, they're, they're really showing up there. And I, the main thing that popped out to me was the Reese Hoskins home run. That was just awesome. The bat <sighs> slam. It wasn't even Ooh. a bat flip. That was just, it was great. The bat I think spike. This is, yeah, bat spike. That spike, but um, I really did. Max Freed, just I don't know, man. I really Spencer Strider, also his, yeah. His playoff ERA is fourteen point five. It's awful, and I mean, just seeing him getting signed to this big deal, uh, Spencer Strider. I mean, they uh, they I really don't. No one was expecting any of this for any. What of do you things. think happened? What do you think happened to the Braves, bro? Was it was the World Series hangover? Like as you watched that. Whether it be highlights or watch it live, like what do you think happened to the Braves? I, I really couldn't. I can't even <laughs> tell you. No one was expecting any of this, really. Yeah. Any of these teams, and it was just, it was really weird. But one of the best, definitely one of the best postseason so far for sure. Yeah, and, I can uh, tell you, a main factor in that series was Citibank Field. I mean, yeah. holy cow, bro! What in the world? Like, did the city of Philadelphia survive that? <laughs> like, I think we just need to check on people's power in their homes after that. Yeah. I mean, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I, I was watching that, and of course, I'm still salty. They beat us. But I was like, that's us in 2014 mm -hmm. when we played the LA Dodgers or when we played the Giants or whatever it was. And just the city is rocking. Yeah. Um, like, you could see, like, it felt like the stadium was shaking when you're watching that on, on TV. Um, I can't imagine being there for that. Bryce Harper finally coming alive. I mean, everyone always talked about, bro, what would happen if Bryce Harper finally got going? Yeah. We're seeing it. We're seeing it. Like, they're going to be a World Series contender. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's crazy. Yeah, I I'm with you. I don't know what happened to the Braves. They just yeah. ran into a buzzsaw, dude. They ran into a buzzsaw. I saw I saw a Cardinals uh, Facebook post of uh, the, the guy who's, like, really sweating between the two red buttons, and it says oh, – yeah. Cheering for the or, or being thankful the team that knocked you out of the playoffs is in the NLCS, or still being upset about the wild card series. And I was like, that's me right now. I don't know if I should feel happy that the Braves ran into the same team we did, or if I should still be upset that we should be there too. But um, yeah, the Braves, the Braves has got a lot, uh, lot to think about in the off season because they're coming into this next season, bro. The Marlins Ooh. aren't going to be bad. They got Alcantara. They got. A great offense. I mean, they, they were kind of like trying to figure it out. The Phillies, obviously, you think about them. I mean, there's going to be teams. The Mets, I mean, like that yeah. that division next year is going to be loaded. So I don't think the Braves are like, our championship window is still open. They got a lot to work on if they're going to be one of those teams in the NL East. Um, but Drew, all of it, all the playoffs have yeah, led I mean, up to this moment. Yeah. It's led up. To one of the greatest, Drew. Here, so here, here's what I'll say before I, before I get into my spiel. I'm I'm frustrated that the Cardinals are out of the playoffs. Right? It really knocked me out. It was really disappointing. Man, why are the Cardinals in our last season of Albert and Yachty and all these great players? How are we not in the championship series or how are we not in the World Series, Drew? It all washed away because ding dong, the witch is dead. <laughs> Ding dong, the witch is dead. Thank you, San Diego. Thank you, Padre Nation. Thank you, Petco Park. You knocked out the L.A. flipping Dodgers. 
Yes, I mean, sir. can we just rejoice, rejoice and be thankful that the villains of baseball are gone? Be thankful that the villains of baseball are no longer in playoff contention. They won 111 games. They won 111 games. And they're done. They're nowhere to be seen. They're sitting on our couches with us watching the rest of the playoffs. Juan Soto, Jake Cronenworth. Manny Machado, stand up, Padre Nation. I'm so thankful that the Padres did what needed to be done. I wish we could just cue the Dave Roberts interview right now. We're winning the World Series. <laughs> Put it on record. We're winning the 2022 World Series. It didn't happen, bub. It didn't happen. Not only did it not happen, you won one game against your little brother. You're not the little brother. They're not the little brother anymore. They're playing for a World Series. This is why they got Juan Soto. So ding dong, the witch is dead, Drew. That was the biggest thing for me, the playoffs takeaway. Obviously, I'm, I'm very upset the Cardinals are no longer in the playoffs. But it doesn't matter anymore because neither are the Dodgers. Yeah. I mean, when I say this whole time, this postseason, no one was expecting this, that series right there, that was that's what I'm talking about. That mm. Padres team really reminds me of like the 2019 Nationals World Series team. Yep. A lot. Uh, just the vibes there. But yep. Petco Park might have been the most electric stadium this whole postseason. That was insane, dude. Bro, I thought That's they were going to rush the field. Literally. Just seeing them <laughs> flying the towels around, that was just unbelievable. Everyone was doing it, too. That was just unbelievable. And like you brought up, Dave Roberts, dude, come on. Come on. That is it's just so – that's why you don't say stuff like that. Like it's so yes. easy, oh. it's so easy to just not say something like that. Like, really? Oh. really? It's so great, Drew. It, it is so great to know the Dodgers didn't even make the championship series. Like, they're not even able to compete anymore, bro. And similarly, they got to go to the NL West next year, where the Padres now have Juan Soto for a full year. Drew, they have Fernando Tatis Jr. coming back after 40 games. People forget about this man. Like, the NL West and the NL East are not going to be these cakewalks anymore. Fernando Tatis didn't even play a game in that series. I mean, just think. Just game? think if he was there. Just think if he was there. Oh, they would have swept him. They, they would have swept him, bro. I mean, it, it would have been over. It would have been over. So, obviously, with the Padre fans that I have that are friends of mine, I watched one of the games with them, and it was just vibes, dude. Vibes yes, the whole time. Like, thank you. Padre Nation. I mean, just God bless. Yeah. I mean, that was probably, that was definitely like my favorite series so far. Easily. 100%. 100%. Easily. Easily. All right. So now is this your favorite series? Are, are you, are you looking forward to this? Dude. Are you looking forward to what happened over the last four games in the What's 2022 rewind? LDS? Walk, walk us through everything, Drew. How, how, how are we feeling over there in the Yankee country? The first thing I got to say, every Yankee fan's going to appreciate this. Ship Isaiah Kiner Kalefa to the moon, please. <laughs> please. Putting Oswaldo Cabrera uh, shortstop in game four was probably the best thing Aaron Boone's done this whole season. The whole season. And honestly, Oswaldo Cabrera, he's going to, I don't know, dude. He's, he's really good. He's going to be really good. He's not really good right now, but. I feel like in the next five years, he could be one of the faces of the Yankees just because you, he's played in the outfield. He's played at shortstop, first base, third base. He's played literally every position this season, and he's done well at every position. But um, just got to get his bat going a little more. But literally, Isaiah I, IKF can't make like a routine play at shortstop, and he's done it this whole year, just not being able to make these plays. And it's really, really frustrating. It really makes you question the uh, the whole Josh Donaldson, him not doing well either. I mean, it really makes you question that whole trade. It really does. Mm. And um, mm. but another thing, like that whole game three was just ridiculous. Whole everything about that uh, Clay, Clay Holmes being available to pitch, not coming in, himself Weird. being confused about that. Luis Severino also being confused about that. And I feel like if he was brought in, then it would have been an easy win and we'd be done with all this by now. But um, what was I going to say here? There's just so much, dude. Um, <laughs> that, so and, give me your on, initial reaction on. to game three, first of so, all. So I was obviously we see Harrison Bader just being awesome. Gotta love it. Matt Carpenter giving him the applause. The first one in the postseason. But um, 
Yeah, dude, that's just not everything up until that ninth inning was just so fun to watch. And then Clark Schmidt comes in, who did fine, to be honest. He really did do fine, and every hit was just a ridiculous blooper. And the final hit was like, "Are you are you kidding me?" I could hear my dad in the other room, like, "Are you kidding me?" It was just <laughs> like, dude. Honestly, but we got we need to talk about Harrison Bader because this man is like the Yankees' hero right now. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> three three homers in four games in this this series, mm. and that he's joining Mick, Mickey Mantle and Bernie Williams, being the only Yankee center fielders with three home runs in a single postseason. Like, dude, that is <laughs> that's some company, bro. That's, that's huge. some company. That's huge, and. Yeah, I've said I. Everyone's where's Jordan, they're all nervous. Jordan Montgomery, we're really giving him up. I he's great, and I'm happy you guys have him because he really is yep. good. But I was so hyped to hear that we were getting Harrison Bader back, and yeah. um, I was always a fan of him. And it's really uh, all the pieces are being put together with that. Our outfield's going to be crazy next year. I feel like if we uh, can keep Ben Attendee as well, I mean he's just what he's just great. But um. The thing that upset me the most about everything was Josh Naylor. And I'm sure you've seen this. Dude, it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. Just everything about, I don't even like, all right. I get, I get it's postseason baseball, but like, mm. and I get you're leading two to one in the mm. series, but you're down a run and you're going to call Garrett Cole your effing son. Like, dude. <laughs> Dude, that's not a good look. I see Yankees fans that are going to the game tonight in the Bronx, so that's not he's not going to have a fun night tonight. With no, he's fans. not. No, and he's I not. And I seen someone print out uh, the picture of him like holding the baby with an L. <laughs> holding an L. And someone's bringing that to the game, and I'm pretty sure they said they were like right near the Cleveland dugout. So like that's that dude's oh. not going to have a night. He's not going to have a game. Um, but yeah, that really upset me. Did you see Garrett Cole's reaction to that by chance? I did. The, yeah, that's I did. awesome. But um, yeah, dude, um, Jamison Tyone on the mound tonight. That scares me because he can either be lights out or we're going to be very depressed at the end of this game. So he's hmm. got to show up. That defense is going to have to be there for sure with him on the mound because you never really know. Um, and that's that's really all I got right now for that. We're just I'm hyped to watch this. I'm getting ready. And so when we look back at Game Five, the 2022 ALDS, what what are we going to be able to say? <laughs> uh oh, I don't Drew? know, man. Are you, you know, nervous? You know what we're going to say? I'm, we're going to predict this right now. We're going to say that it's going to be we're going to see the Yankees playing the Astros. That's all we need to know. That's all we need to know. You don't need no score. You don't need no, you don't no need score. Anything. We're not going to get into the as scores long, or anything. As long as the Yankees win. <laughs> Drew. Oh, and also, 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 Josh Naylor has a 111 batting average against Gary Cole for his career. So just wanted to bring that up. Just wanted to bring Drew that up. Drew was just chomp at the bit talking about Josh Naylor, man. Drew, I'll just say this, bro. Y'all better win. <laughs> Y'all better win. Because it's going to be a fun podcast you, next just, week. I need you to be saying that we might need to lose, to be honest, because you've been cursing. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to curse you guys. All these teams. I don't want to curse you guys, man. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm cursing DJ my own team. Is I, the curse? I don't know what I'm doing. Listen, do you want me to pick the Guardians? Is that what you want me to do right now? Yes. Do you want me to pick the Guardians yes. to win? All right. I got the Guardians winning. I got them pulling off the upset. I got yep. James and Tyone getting absolutely <laughs> shelled. What else do you want me to say? I got Clay That's Holmes. Good. I think we're good. That's, That's almost good. too much. That's almost too much. It's kind of hurting. Me. All right. So. <laughs> No, but Jameson, I don't know, dude. He's uh, you know, he was the pick after Bryce Harper in that that draft. That's crazy. It was, it was Bryce Harper, Jameson Tyone, and then Manny Machado. So that that's crazy. Just... Speaking of which, I don't know if you saw this. The twenty nineteen, I saw somebody tweet this, and we're gonna need to talk about this soon, bro. The twenty nineteen free agency is coming to fruition. Do you realize that? Yeah. Twenty nineteen. At the end of the season, Manny Machado was on the Orioles and Bryce Harper was on the Nationals. Yeah, I did see that actually. Now those know. trades that happened that year or that off season have now together, resulted baby. in Phillies Padres. That's, That's pretty true. cool. That's pretty dope. I'm just saying. Yes, sir. Well, we yeah. will have a lot to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, come next week, as you guys are listening to this, 
will we be talking about how great the 2022 ALCS will be between the Yankees and the Astros? Or will we be talking about the Astros sweeping the Guardians in the 2022 ALCS? Because yeah. that seems like it's the options right now. Yeah. Either the Guardians pull off an upset and they have no shot, or the Yankees give us the ALCS that we've been wanting, that I've been predicting. But apparently if I'm predicting it, all bets are off. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We appreciate you guys always as uh, liking and subscribing, rate and review the podcast, all those great things. We will have tons to get into. Drew, we still got to do a backyard baseball draft. Ooh. That is coming down the pipeline soon. Don't you guys worry. More collapses, more top fives. Let us know what you think of those. What top five do we miss out on? What team should we do next? Uh, which collapse is your most favorite to talk about? Because I love talking about the Cubs. Uh, as always, I'm Carlos Fanag, AJ Caldwell. That is Yankees, ride or die guy, hopefully next week, Drew Zagrosi. And we will talk to you guys in the next episode. See you guys later.